All right, let's go ahead and get underway today. So first and foremost, huge thank you to all of you for uh, hopping on and taking the time to be part of this webinar today. And uh, today we've got a guest presenter. We've got Dan Bubini on and very excited for him to share with you his journey over the past, how many months has it been now, Dan? So I think we were calculating that like, and I was talking to Courtney, I think it was like Jan July 11th is when I sort of kind of came on board where we had gone through our initial call and that's when I actually signed up for RGX. July? And so, July. No. Yes. Really? Yes. Oh my God. yes. I thought it was before. Yes. Okay. Wow. No, no, no. <laughs> we spoke for the first time at the end of June and then we officially, I think my onboard okay. date was, now you can ask her, it might've even been July 14, 15 in there. Okay. And then we just, we just, I right mean, we then. hit the ground running. All right. Well, that's even more impressive then. So, uh, boy, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I was like, oh, April or May or something like that. No, so, no, no, no. So, yeah. So today, um, what we're going to do is we're going to have Dan present and highlight what he's accomplished, what he's doing, what hurdles he overcame, what he's, what he's understood from working in the groups with RGX and really help all of you on, on your journey. And this is something we're going to now be doing with RGX is realizing that, the power of one of your peers who's talking just a few weeks, a few months, yeah, literally a few weeks ahead of many of you, it helps you to start to understand like, wow, that's, that's what he did. I've been hearing that, but I haven't acted on it. Also, when it comes from a fellow peer, it's going to sound different, you know, because you're going to hear different things in different ways and you're going to be able to connect on a clearer level. So the goal of today is definitely take the time to take a bunch of notes. Uh, Brian's put together, uh, sorry, Brian, there we go, hopping on. Good to see you, sir. Um, Dan, oh, and Brian Wise as well, just hopping on. Good stuff. So Dan's put together a PowerPoint. Um, so we'll make it a, sort of an open Q&A. Sometimes Dan might say, hey, let me get to another slide. But for sure, what we want to do is make sure that this is interactive and we're learning from what Dan's done and his results are, are very uh to say them to say the least positive you know very very positive and he's moving in a great direction mainly because of the level of passion i see in him now and the handcuffs so dan why don't you go ahead if you'd like to share your screen and uh start off with a little bit of a background of where you're at to start with and then take it from there of course so will thank you first of all um welcome everybody i mean i want to say that RGX, and this is not, this is not to put it lightly, RGX has changed my life and it's changed my life in about 11 weeks. I, I started working with Will, we said in early to mid July, last Thursday, October 1st was my first official day of freedom, as I call it, because I was no longer in the golf shop. I no longer had to worry about standing behind the counter, standing behind a desk, answering phones and booking tea times. I was a free man and I will share a little bit about my journey with you, but I, I was actually, you know, and through Will's help and guidance and the team that Will has surrounded himself with, you know, Jared Butts, Sarah Dant, through my, my, and Jay Cook, obviously, through my interactions with those people, I got the coaching that I needed to have the confidence to break away. And I stopped booking private lessons on September 1st. And I had some commitments that I had to honor, you know, previously, but then I did my last private lesson on September 20th and I recorded a video and I blasted it out to everybody who I knew of, who I had either worked with or who had maybe lessons remaining with me from a series that they still hadn't redeemed. And I just blasted it out there and I said, I'm not doing this anymore. And I explained a little bit about why and, and, and my story and, and why that was. So I'm going to share a little bit about my journey with you today. You know, obviously, feel free to chime in at any time. If you're not, um, if you don't have something to say or a question to ask, please mute your, your audio just so that we have a really clean copy of the audio. And that way, when people go back and listen to this recording, they can, they can really get the full effect. And, and uh, this recording will be available later. Of course, you are always welcome to contact me personally. I've had interactions with some folks who RG, are RGX coaches now and some who are not. Um, I spoke to Steve Miller yesterday. The whole point is to, to share this message with you in a way that you can go off and do it yourself and make it your own. And I'm happy to share with you anything that I have that may help you along your journey to help you be a success. Because 
This really is revolutionizing golf instruction. It really is about me helping you. If, if Will can't, then it's me. Then if I can't, then it's Jared. If I can't, then it's Sarah. We all have a different, uh, maybe a, a different way of describing the journey that we've been on, but it all leads to the same place. And at the end of the day, I'm here to tell you that it works. You just have to do it. So let's kind of start, and I'll kind of start off by telling you exactly how if you want, you can get out of the golf shop and out onto the course in 11 weeks or less. Yes, it's true. You can do it, and I'm living proof. And I can't tell you uh, how appreciative I am. I mean, I've been able to share, you know, just little snippets. I'd share a video here, a video there with Jared and with, with Will and with Jay. And I'm so thankful and so appreciative of the coaching that I received. I think I realized that after a while that and probably like a lot of you have realized that sometimes it's fun to be coached. And I probably needed to be coached myself just to, again, have the confidence that I needed to just put myself out there and to go in a different direction that maybe at the time was a little bit scary. Um, my motivation for kind of getting, getting started on this journey, I was miserable. And it started right around the, the time the COVID pandemic hit and lessons were suspended. I'm at La Paloma Country Club in Tucson, Arizona. Lessons were suspended, I would say, in early to mid-March, and it didn't take long, maybe like one to two weeks, and all of a sudden, I was just miserable, and I, I couldn't figure out why, you know, and I, so I did some soul searching, and I thought, oh, I mean, like, what happened? Because I was happy. I loved going to work. I never felt like I, I was even working. Like, it was so much fun, and then all of a sudden, it just felt like it was just, it was just this log. And so when I did some soul searching, I realized, you know, 25 to 30% of every single day was for me was spent out on the golf course out on the driving range interacting with members building relationships building connections and all that was just taken away and so then when i when i started to realize that that was what i was missing i was like uh oh you know this is this is not good and i was sort of at a natural crossroads in my career as a pga professional i had you know this one fork in the road which says well you're an assistant professional the next step for you is to become a head golf professional or i could do something that I really loved to do, which was to work with people. And I, I had always kind of gravitated toward that teaching or instructional role, but I really couldn't see how to make that work and how to be able to do that full time. And, but then when I looked at kind of the, the possibility and the, 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 the fact that maybe for the next potentially 20 years of my life, I would be a head golf professional. And I got to see that actually that was more time behind a counter, more time behind a desk, more time behind a computer and more time answering phones and booking tea times. I went, you know, the, the, the prospect of actually doing something that I love is less daunting than 20 years of that. I'm like, that's not why I got in the golf business. And I always said I never wanted to be that, that PGA professional who got into the golf industry and never played golf again. That was me. And I'm like, no, this is not good enough. Well, right around that same time, I happened to stumble upon, as I'm sure many of you have, PGA.coach. So I'm, there's this new video series about becoming the modern coach. And I'm like is this an angel landing on my shoulder? Like the timing could not have been more perfect. So I start watching these videos and I just devoured the videos. I felt like, I felt like it, they were talking to me and that, you know, Will as the host was articulating things that I couldn't say for myself that I was just miserable standing behind the counter. And why was I miserable? Because all these relationships and connections and all these things that I'd cultivated over the years I didn't get to have those anymore. And I was stuck inside instead of being outside on the golf course in these beautiful views where I really wanted to be. And so then at the end of this video series, it was like, well, do you want more information? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And I'm never one to take less as opposed to more. But then when I realized, oh, wait a minute, I can actually set up a call with the presenter, with Will Robbins, who actually did this video series, I was just, I was blown away. So it didn't take long. Will and I sit and talk and... I remember the conversation because I remember kind of articulating how I was feeling and, and Will, you know, just in a very, you know, simple but eloquent way as he has of speaking. And he just says, well, if I hear you correctly, it sounds like you're miserable being in the golf shop and you want to spend more time outside interacting with members and getting results for your players. And I'm like, well, yeah, I guess so, you know. And it was something that I hadn't been able to articulate that clearly, but I had, I had shared that message with my wife. I had shared that message with my family, but I hadn't yet shared it with management. And I think that was the kind of the last piece of the puzzle that I had to hear from somebody else that, no, no, this is what you're saying. Well, let's go about crafting a, a way to get you out of the golf operation and outside to be able to do what it is that you really love to do. 
And so that kind of led us to finding our why. And, and I think, and this is kind of Will alluded to this, but when you find your passion, it's not that you want to do something. It's that you have to do something. And so once I worked with Jay, Jay Cook, another one of, you know, of Will's incredible team who kind of helped me kind of boil down what it was that I was thinking and feeling and why I needed to do what I needed to do. Once I, I narrowed, narrowed that down, it was like, get out of the way. It was like, I was a train and I had the, you know, the cattle guard on the front of the train. And it was like, just get out of the way. Like, I know what I need to do now get out of the way. And so I was starting to meet with management. And I remember this day very clearly when I said, I was meeting with my director of golf and my general manager. And I said, guys, I don't want to be in the golf operation anymore. And those words just kind of hung there. And I, I remember feeling like someone had taken an anvil and just taken it off my shoulder and just kind of like dropped it because I've been carrying this weight, you know, with me for so long that I knew I wanted to get out, but I hadn't articulate. I did again, I'd said it to my wife, I'd said it to my family, but I hadn't said it to my bosses. And that was like the last piece of the puzzle. I needed to let them know I needed to articulate what it was that I wanted. And I told them, look, I want to spend more time out on the golf course. I want to spend more time interacting with members and just continuing to build those connections and relationships that I had built over the course of time. And most importantly, I wanted to be able to guarantee results for my players because it never felt right to me. I go to the driving range and tell me if you felt this way. You go on the driving range, you're working with somebody, and then you're like, you look at the clock, you're like, hey, uh, well, your hour's up, Mr. Smith. Good luck to you. And then you may never see him for, you know, I might not see him again for three months, maybe six months. So there's no accountability. There's no accountability from the player's perspective because you're like, well, uh, I hope you work on the right things. And there's no accountability from the coach's perspective because you're not sure they're working on the right things either. And the player, you know, life gets in the way before you know it. They're, you know, they may get off track. They get distracted. And so you feel in a way like maybe you've taken their money because you're not sure if they're working on the right things and you're not sure if you're ever going to see them again. And it just never really sit, you know, it, it never really sat right with me. But this was a way, if I could get out of the golf shop and do this full time, that I could guarantee a result for my players because I was going to get to spend more time with them and I was going to get to make sure that they were practicing and playing the right way. And that, that to me was really hugely important and something that I hadn't heard very often before. I mean, how often have you heard a golf instructor guarantee a result for his or her player? Probably never. I always, I mean, I kind of joke that you hear that. Well, then shortly you hear a trunk slamming and you hear tires screeching out of the parking lot because no golf instructor has ever guaranteed a result ever, right? It just doesn't happen. So the next step was, well, really kind of unpacking why it was that I wanted to do this. And part of that reason that I wanted to just, I wanted everybody to just get out of the way. Once I'd articulated that, work-life balance was so, so important to me. And I felt like I wasn't getting paid what I was work, worth. I was, I was working way too hard. I wasn't making the money that I wanted to make. And I've got two young kids. You know, I have a two-year-old and a three-year-old, and I didn't want to look back and realize that I had missed them growing up because I was working too much. And when I said I was working too much, it wasn't the, the kind of things that, you, you know, it wasn't doing the thing that I loved, which was being out on the golf course, playing more golf, working with members, building relationships and connections. It was more time behind the computer, dealing with the locker room attendant, answering phones, booking tee times, helping a member post a score, helping a member start a handicap. Like that's not what I got into the business to do. That's part of the job. It just wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. And then what I started to see was, oh, well, there's a way to not only make more money, me personally, but it's actually going to cost the person who's taking coaching less money because this isn't one-on-one -on -one instruction anymore. This is group coaching. This is a group dynamic. So part of the way that you're able to make more money in less time is that you're working with more people in less time. You're also able to, you know, set your own schedule and do all these great things so that you control your own life. And as I made that transition to group coaching, I started, you know, and this is, again, this is, this is all will. I mean, this stuff, this stuff just works. Part of the reason I was able to kind of fast track and transition as quickly as I was, there were two reasons. One, I was incredibly 
busy. I was restricted in terms of the number of hours I could teach in a week. I had 10 hours out of a 40 hour work week, roughly 10 hours to teach. I had a waiting list. I was booked three weeks in advance and I had a waiting list 30 people long. So I wasn't able to meet that demand. I wasn't able to, to reach out and touch everybody who, who wanted my time. Then what I realized, so once I was kind of at that capacity level, I started really studying and just again, because of the good fortune and an unintended benefit of this COVID pandemic, everybody started to use Zoom technology. So then before you know it, I was learning from the best coaches in California and South America and South Africa and Spain. And all of a sudden I'm learning from all the best coaches in the world and we're all sharing ideas. And it was this idea of transitioning from one-on-one -on -one instruction to group coaching and utilizing this, this platform called the scoring method, which I can't tell you how simple, but how powerful it is. And it's this idea that people don't have a technique problem. They have a tension problem because what happens is, and you know, they go out and they play golf. They start playing well, their expectations go up, their tension goes up and their skill sets go down. And the, the best example, you know, that, that Will's used and that, that I use with my players now is I say, well, look, maybe they're skeptical about the whole tension versus technique idea. I say, well, tell me if this has ever happened to you. You hit a bad shot, you put another ball down and you hit a great shot. And they're like, well, that, that's me every, every day. And I'm like, why can't that happen all the time? Why can't you hit good shots all the time? You don't have a technique problem. You have a tension problem. So then how do we go about attacking that so that you can play to your potential. You know, it's my job as your coach to unlock that potential that you already know that you have inside of you because you've experienced it. And that's the idea of playing left brain versus right brain. Left brain is very technique oriented. Well, what's my grip? Where's the club? How am I swinging? Right brain is just hit it there. You know, like hit it there. It's target focused. You know, I, I just want the ball to do this and I want it to go there. Okay, do that. That's a much more relaxing way to play golf. And it's something everybody can do when they realize, Oh, wait a minute, I don't need to go for the pin. I can just hit it in the middle of the green. Like, Oh, I can do that. Or when you show them that all they need to do is to, to put the ball into an area that's eight feet in diameter from 30 feet away. And they, they put it and they, it's like, Oh, well, that's easy. Or you show them a concept of like putting with loft where you're, you're using a hybrid club to show them different shots off the green instead of a chip shot, which they might skull or chunk or hit thin or hit fat. You show them, no, 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 just, just putt, but with a hybrid. And you say, well, how many putts can you just get, uh, you know, inside of a 60-foot a, a circle, 30 feet away on either side? And you've never shown them the shot. They've never done it before, and they get 10 out of 10. And you go, well, that's weird. Are you sure you've never done this before? They go, oh, no, no I've, never, no, I've never done this before. And you're like, well, is this easy or hard? Well, it's really easy. So why don't you do it all the time? I don't know. I've never shown the shot. And then they start utilizing it and they realize, oh, because the sole of the hybrid is so wide, I'm not going to chunk it. And I just have to putt it. I'm, I don't usually blade or chunk putts. So I just do the same stroke and it works. And it's like, there you go. And that's the magic of the scoring method. This is all tied together. It's all about getting players to play more relaxed. And when you're more relaxed, your skill sets go up, not down. And everybody knows that they have this potential in them. Everybody really at some level, they want to be coached. They just maybe haven't articulated that to you yet, but they really want it to be able to play to their potential. And it's something they've all experienced at one time or another, but they don't get it consistently. This is the video that I recorded once I stopped coaching and doing individual private lessons. So I recorded this on September 20th. This is the video that I sent out. I, I told you guys about, I sent it out to everyone. And this is the video that I sent out on September 20th at the conclusion of my very last lesson. And I don't know if it's going to let us do this now, of course, but if it does come on board, then we'll play it. It's basically just, it was me for one minute saying, I'm not doing private lessons anymore. And here's why, because I don't believe that's the best way to get you to achieve the results that you want. It's going to give you more time with me. It's going to cost you less money and I'm going to guarantee the result. And that's a very, very powerful thing. And I just realized based on all the feedback that I was getting from the players I was working on, I mean, the most common complaint I would get is, you know, I can do it on the driving range, but I can't do it on the golf course. And I finally said, well, 
you know, the reason why that is, is because you don't practice or you don't play under pressure, you know, and I can't replicate that pressure that you feel on the golf course when you're playing with your buddies, if it's just the two of us standing on the driving range or standing on the golf course. So I said, that's another reason why we need to go and we need to do this as a group. We need to go into a group coaching dynamic so you can feel that pressure. And I can simulate that pressure for you that you're going to feel when you get on the golf course and play with your buddies. So at the end of the day, my message to you is just do it. And I am, I am, I'm a, I've always been a fan of Nike. So that, that works on that level. But you know, for me it was finally just deciding that as of September 1st, once I could see, and we were kind of going through, you know, talking and we were talking, I was talking with management about getting me out of the, the golf shop. And initially it was, well, we probably won't be able to get that, that, that to work and you won't be able to, you know, become an independent contractor until January 1st. And then it was, well, I don't know if it'll, we'll be able to do it before the end of the year. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh no, we think by the 1st of October, we'll be able to do it. So here's this video that I was showing you. Let's just, I'll stop you here for just a second and let's play this video. This was the video I recorded. Actually, I had a junior record this video for me right after I did my last private lesson. I think the one thing I would say here, and it's unfortunate it's not playing, but I'm oh, looking, okay. at, I've, got, I've got it in my text because you text it to me. <laughs> and I think the one... I think the one thing that I want to challenge everyone to as we go into now the sort of more of the how, because we've really defined the why, is just, you know, look at the level of confidence that Dan's got in that, that willingness to believe, like, I'm going to send a video out to every one of my students telling them exactly why I'm not going to teach them privately. I mean, that's seriously, that is when we talk about the belief and the why and the internal is like, that gets you into a position to have people follow you because you're going to stand out so differently, you know. Uh, Dan, do you want to share your screen again and we can bring up those slides? You know, kind of going back to what we talked about, and I think this is, this is something, again, we, we all, I think as professionals, we want to be coached. And we, we need to be coached in, in some aspects. I mean, I needed to be coached because I needed Will to clarify for me what I was feeling and why I was feeling what I was feeling. And I needed Jay to help me kind of boil down how I could articulate why I wanted to get out of the golf operation in the first place. Um, all those things are really, really important. But then at the end of the day, you just have to do it, you know, and at the end of the day, I just decided, okay, once I could see that there was light at the end of the tunnel and that it looked like October 1st was going to be my first day as a quote unquote free man. And I would do this because it was, it felt so daunting to be in the golf shop any longer. Once I could see that I stopped booking private lessons and then people would go, I'd say, you know, they're like, Hey, I'd really like to get some. And I'd say, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore. And they almost, they would all go, what do you mean? Because see, everybody's so conditioned to the individual private lesson, the two of us standing on the range or the two of us going out on the golf course for an hour and playing three holes. Like that's what they're conditioned to do and to feel. So when I said, you know what, I'm not doing that anymore. They, they almost all, they just kind of like, well, what do you mean? And then that's an invitation to share what it is that you believe, but you can't share that message if you haven't boiled it down with Will or Jay or Jared to make sure that it's, it's really smooth. But eventually what happened was, you know, and at first I started just saying, you know, I'm working on something big and it's coming and, you know, I'll share it with you when I can. Well, then once I stopped booking private lessons, it was go time. And then people would kind of linger around in the golf shop and I, you know, I, if they had a couple of minutes and I would share and I'd say, look, I said, there are three reasons that I'm doing this and here's why I'm leaving the golf operation. One, I don't want to be indoors. I got into this business to be outside, and we have these huge windows right behind the golf shop that look out over, you know, the Catalina Mountains, and it's, you know, it's gorgeous. You can see the golf course and the driving range. I said, I want more time out there, not more time in here. And then I said, I realized that when I stopped teaching, I was miserable. And I realized that the reason why I was miserable was because I didn't get to spend time working and relating to the people I was working with. Those connections had, that I built, I wasn't getting to, to, you know, to experience them as much. And I said, you know what? What makes my day is when, when one of you comes in and you share a success story or a goal or something amazing that you've accomplished, that's what makes my day. And I wanted more of that, not less of that. And I said, and then the last reason that I've decided to get, to, to get out of the golf operation is what I shared with you earlier. I feel like 
it was, I was almost doing an injustice if I couldn't guarantee the results for my players. And that's something that is, I would say, probably the best selling point of this whole thing. You guarantee the result for your player or you say you're going to coach them for free. But here's the deal. It never gets there because the scoring method works. It's a new way of playing the game. It's a different way to think about scoring. It's more fun. It'll make your day. And it just works. And again, when I looked at the prospect of continuing down this path of actually coaching and doing what I love versus more time in the shop, maybe dealing with payroll, HR, scheduling, it seemed like it was a lot less daunting to do that, to do what I love than to be spending more time in the shop. So to me, it was eventually it became an easy decision. And once I realized this is not something that, uh, that, that I want to do, this is something that I felt so passionately that I needed to do, I had to do it and everybody else just get out of the way. There was really no stopping me. And so then when I started sharing this message and when I had a chance and I, I started inviting people out to just play nine holes, I'd say, you know, come out and play nine holes. I'll, I'll show you what it is I've been working on and, and what it is that, that, you know, the scoring method's all about. And we can talk from there. We would go into, you know, what we call the turn or basically like the members grill, you know, between nines and we play nine holes and I'd sit down and I would, I would just kind of just, pour myself out to these people that I just played with and almost all of them were like oh my gosh like I can really see how passionate you are like my body chemistry had changed because I was I knew that I it was like I was doing the right thing and I felt so good about what I was doing that my, my I mean I sit up straighter and I was more excited and it's I, I mean I hope that it's coming across now it was like it was so amazing and so much fun. I couldn't wait to share it with as many people as I could share it with. And, and that's part of the, the whole RGX experience too. It's that I want, I want as many people to hear this message as possible because it works. It's more fun. It's a way for you to guarantee results for your players. It's a way to make more money for you in less time. It gives you better work-life balance. You get to spend more time with your family. You get more freedom. Win, 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 win. That's the bottom line, but you have to do it. You have to make it happen. And, and that's, you know, that's up to you. And all I'm here to tell you is that you can do it, but you have to be willing to try. And a lot of times I feel like as professionals, we, we basically, we, we want everything to be perfect before we're willing to let it go. Um, and Will's famous for saying, you know, ready, fire, aim. You, you figure out the aim afterward i mean you can adjust that but but the hard part i think for for most of us and most professionals is just firing to begin with just pull the trigger just do it because it will change your life it has already changed mine and there's no reason it can't work for you too does anybody have any questions as we move along here yes we do feel free sure. to chime so, in yeah yep, chime i got in. a bunch typed in and so Let's, um, let's start off by saying, Dan, thank you very much. That was awesome to watch. I had no, I just asked Dan to put together a presentation. It was just fun to watch it. And I think that, uh, you know, it's exciting to see that passion that you've got inside of you. And I think that you've, the biggest thing is each of us finding our own why and you found your why and your belief system. And this is why, you know, Jay works so heavily on the seeds of belief, why we work so hard on our story, why we work so hard on who we are as a coach and why we're going to become that coach. Cause that's how you get a sold out program. So just let me know if I'm on track here. So 44 people signed up for your coaching program, correct? So, uh, yes. So initially I, I had all these people and you know what I actually decided, I actually decided to pair it back. Um, I had 44, actually 45 signed up and then I, I went back and I, I talked to some guys and I said, you know what? I don't know if the timing is quite right. So, I actually got more free time. I'm doing 40. It's basically 41 players now signed up instead of the 45. And that was a decision I made. It wasn't because of lack of interest. I have a prospect list that's over 70 people long. I'm to the point I can't accommodate everybody. Um, I've actually started turning people away. And this is another way to get buy-in from, from your, your country club or your facility. I don't have enough time to, to teach all these people. So if they really want private lessons, you send them to the guys or the gals in the shop because that's going to be where they need to be for now. And guess what? They'll take the business. Hopefully they want to get better as teachers or coaches and that's going to be more business for them. So you can say, actually, it actually means more business for the shop and for those folks in the shop because 
I'm not doing private lessons anymore, quote unquote. Yeah. So a few questions that came in, one from Tony Chavez, which uh, yeah. did management freak out when you approached them? So yeah. let's talk about a little bit of just a small background about the approach, what we did in making sure that that was not a major problem. Yeah. So we, we really, I mean, this took, as you know, I'm, I'm somebody who I'm, I go hundred miles an hour. So I wanted to put it all out there and I wanted it yesterday. And I remember you kind of coaching me to, you know, to just kind of, to kind of pull back. And we talked about the best way to start kind of let management know that I was thinking about doing something else. And so we would, we would kind of release these like little kernels of, of information. And this was, I thought this was really, really creative where I would just kind of pop my head into my general manager's office, you know, in the afternoon, I'd be like, Hey, uh, like, what do you think about this? And then maybe there would be a little conversation and then, you know, I would go back and I would tell, I would tell Will kind of what had happened. And then we maybe kind of go in a different direction, but we would drop these little, like we would drop these little ideas and kind of see what the reaction was. And then we kind of knew based on that reaction, which way we wanted to go with the negotiation. And I remember it was like, well, he would, he would just, Will would say, no, 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 you're, we're really not ready to quite share this yet. Let's just kind of, you know, craft a few more things and polish these things. And then once it was like ready to go, it was like, okay, now you need to start sharing this information. But we did it very carefully so that exactly to your point, Tony, so that management would not freak out because what happened was when I finally shared, I don't want to be in the golf operation anymore. And my general manager was like, okay, this is interesting. Well, my director of golf was like, well, if you don't want to be here, I don't want you here. So then everything kind of fast tracked to where, you know, if when I shared that information in August, he would have had me out of the picture basically in September. If he, if he could have my director of golf, whereas my general manager was more like, okay, well, let's take our time and kind of see how this goes and how this evolves. Um, and then basically once, once, but once I put it out there, then it was like everything just kind of, kind of set it up. If, you know, management time to think about their next play and how they wanted to basically replace my position in the golf shop and then how they wanted to handle me outside of the operation. And, and basically what we kind of stumbled upon was becoming an independent contractor, but we didn't start there. That was kind of, you know, we went on all these different paths. And then finally we, after presenting several different options, that was the, option that seemed to be most agreeable for everyone. Yeah. And I think this is the one place where I would, uh, I would say that both, both myself and you, Dan, are very much ready, fire, aim. Let's just make it happen. Whereas within contracts, it is a negotiation and negotiations are all about being prepared. And I think that <clears throat> things that we did was, as you said, I mean, we, we planned out all the financials of what it would look like for Dan, but most importantly, what it would look like for the club and listed out every single benefit and listed out every single issue and went through them painstakingly and was like, you know, how, what's the response to this? What's the response to that? So that we knew, because again, you've heard me say, many of you have said, you, you just can't take a leap of faith, okay? And what I mean by that is, take a logical step. If you've got two children and you have a business and you're getting paid a salary and you have health insurance, I am not going to be the one who says, yeah, just jump. You'll be fine. <laughs> you'll, you'll land on the other side. Hopefully it's how do we make it so logical that the business is built up to a level the, you know, the way you're going to transfer over. And, and the, every time I've done this has always worked out differently. It's always worked out for the best, but I think that was one of the big things of, you know, just highlighting with them the data that we pulled about the members, you know, when we went through that whole process, Dan, of like figuring out members who took lessons with Dan and didn't take lessons with Dan. And what was their member spend versus their non, you know, from the people who didn't take lessons. And, what and the at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, and, and like at the end of the day, I mean, you're, you're saying, again, this sticks with me. You're like, no is an okay answer when you're in a negotiation. Because like the things that we researched and the things we thought and the data that we presented, it ended up not even, they didn't care. Like that, that didn't even matter. Like, you know, it was so hard for them to get to, you know, to share with me the data of what members were spending based on members who were receiving coaching and members who weren't. Like at the end of the day, for them, it wasn't about the numbers. Like they, they, that wasn't important to them, but we didn't know that until we went through all these different scenarios and we were really, we were overly prepared. We we're so overly prepared. And, uh, you know, that, that's why it worked. I think because we had yeah. anticipated, it seemed like every single scenario. 
Yeah. And then I think also that, that, that step of just planting little seeds and saying to like, Hey, did you, did you, you know, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And just trying to pick up on their response so that we could come back and re redesign what the plan was and then came up with an ABCD plan. Look, full-time employment, half part-time employment, independent contractor, you know, all director of golf, you know, all these different opportunities. But again, with what J- the work Jay had done with, uh, with Dan was like, look, part of it's just like, I just want out. Okay. Which is one way of thinking about it, but it's also, you'll make a bad decision when all you want is out. So it was the structure of, you know, don't have, you know, don't get out, but still have the handcuffs that they're in control of A, B, C, and D. How do you make it a win for both? So I think that was really a big part to it is, is that every general manager I've ever worked to or director of golf or director of instruction has a different opinion on these things. And you have to, you know, really plan those out. And so it worked out really nicely. Another question there, which was one of the questions that we covered, Jeff, from Jeff Hotchman was, how does this affect the other assistant pros? And I think you've started to kind of explain that, that that was already, we knew that would come up as a question. And, and Dan, you kind of explain a little bit more about what they're seeing now. Yeah. And, I, and in fact, I told them, you know, as once it was finally apparent that I was, there was light at the end of the tunnel and that I was going to be getting out. I, I wanted to tell everyone personally, there were three other guys in the shop and I wanted to hear, I wanted them to hear from me personally, exactly what was happening now that it was okay to share. And I said, look, I said, this is actually going to mean more business for you if you want it, because I'm not going to be able to satisfy all the demand. I'm already seeing it because within days of stopping, you know, booking private lessons, my programs, my group coaching programs were filling up. And I said, look, if there's going to be more business, if you want it, it's up to you if you want to take it. And I mean, the guys have already started to see it, you know? And, and so it's like, they understand. And it's a win. I mean, if they're able to do more teaching and they're able to make more money, they're on board because they're like, Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I get to do more to make more like they, they love it. You know, they think it's great. Um, I think too. And one thing I kind of wanted to circle back around, you talk about how we wanted to make sure that this was, you know, a a very well crafted before we kind of brought it to management. I realized, you know, once I'd, I'd worked with Jay and I'd really kind of boiled down my why I felt so, I, I felt like, and this is, this is how I would describe it. I felt like somebody just struck a match and thrown the match on me. And I, it just reignited my passion. Like I was on fire. Like at that point, once I knew my why, you know, it was like, you know, I, I felt invincible. Like I just needed to, to get out. But even though my passion was so ignited, we had to do it the right way. And I, I just remember thinking, um, I want out so bad. I don't even care how much it costs. Like I remember to me, money was no object. Money was, it was just a number. Like if, if Will had said, you know, I could get you out, but it's going to be $5,000. I'd be like, okay, I don't care. Just get, get me out. And the, the first two paychecks that I've received since I've started doing group coaching have been the two biggest paychecks I've ever made in my entire life. And I used to be a TV news anchor. It, it's, it's crazy. And, but that's the well, kind of I thing, like, one of the things me, that, Dan, I was so Dan, what I was going to say there is, again, and I think this is where, you know, obviously what we're always talking to all of you about, about getting in the community, getting on the calls, being in your mastermind groups, getting on your boot camps and asking questions. Uh, I see Asha, she sent some great questions into Jared. And I think it's one of these things of like, you know, yeah, it was like, hey, this is the percentage they're going to take and just take it. And then it's like, well, no, it's a negotiation. Let's go ahead and negotiate down. You know, let's start where we want to start and then maybe move to where they want to go to. And I think that, you know, we won't talk numbers, but uh, it, it enabled you to be an independent contractor and, you know, keep a large sum of what you do, which is great because as an independent contractor, obviously you've got to look at healthcare. You've got to look at, you know, I've got to cover my own PGA dues. I've got a, you know, there are other costs that that a, that a club will pick up for you. Um, any a question from from Jeff was how how does your relationship work as an independent contractor? You want to just break that down a little bit, um, Dan, of kind of how how that relationship is with the course. Ooh. Looks like Dan may have frozen right now. Let's see. I think he's going to relog back on. Um, so yeah, I think uh, just to answer that one, Jeff, it was it was really to do with like, look, all the members like like you, they want to be around you, uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and and free up your salary so we can hire somebody else into that position and bring you as an independent contract because it reduced risk. 
Um, all the reports that we put together were all about risk reduction in terms of how would they get their, their money back for if he was an employee, if they wanted to do that. Um, and so it worked out very well uh, in those regards because we everything was prepared. So even when they said they weren't interested in it, it's because we were able to give them a direct answer. Like, well, look, here's what the return would be. Here it is. And it's like, well, you know, it's just easy to do this. And I think that's the thing about being prepared is, is that so often when you are fully prepared, questions that would come up, if you don't have the answer, come up deeper and then you, you're, you're stuck. Uh, and so the process worked out really well. Um, let me see what other questions we've got, Dan, coming back in right now. Um, um, da, 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 da. It sounds like, okay, where, does anyone want to unmute back, themselves? Yeah, there we go, Dan, don't worry. I just answered all your questions. It was all good. I, I, oh, did, good. It, I did it in American <laughs> accent as well. So and any other questions from the group today in regards to to what Dan has been able to do? And obviously, you know, for you know many pros, you know, that ability to get out of the pro shop and start to work on that. Tony Chavez. Was there mutiny from the other assistant pros? Was there was there conflict? Was there friction? Because I mean, you share that passion, Dan, and I share the same passion that you do, that you have, like like everybody in this call, and 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 I just trying to envi visualize that the whole scenario because I have to improve. I mean, I truly have to improve in negotiations, but. Um, Sometimes just the, 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 the hint of conflict or friction, it, it stops me. So I want to, I, I would like to, i like to hear about the, how that, that, that played on. I know you didn't care. I know that at the end, your why was so clear that moves you forward, moves you forward. But, uh, but again, you're working at a club. You're going to see these people every, every day still. Um, and you know, uh, just, just can you play that out for me? Sure. So, you know, I would say that the guys that I work with in the shop, they knew that I really liked to teach. I was doing more lessons than anyone else, probably 10 to one. I mean, it was not close. Um, so they knew that that was really where my passion was. I, I think that they, everyone, when I told them that I was going this route, they all had the same reaction. Oh yeah, that makes sense because they knew that that's what I really love to do. And then I sort of softened the blow by telling them, look, this is only going to mean more business for you if you want it. And I think that that sort of took some of the sting out, but they also realized because they could see the work environment that we were all a part of and that we'd all been a part of, they could understand why somebody like me wanted to spend more time outside and less time in the shop. I mean, it just, it just, it wasn't as much fun anymore. And I think that because we were all going through that together, they realized that it made sense to them. And maybe they, in, in one way or another, were hoping that they could do the same thing. I'm going to pick on Brian Wise. Brian, are you there up in uh, Canada? I'm going to unmute you. You might be in the middle of the program. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still here. All right, B. Wise, what, uh, give me your thoughts and feedback. Does this inspire you? I mean, I feel like you're a long way on the journey of what, uh, of what Dan's already done. What, uh, what is this? Yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, that's kind of, Dan, you took the step that's kind of next with winter coming for me. Like just kind of, I think by hopefully next year, I hope to move into like a director of instruction at our, at our course, which they haven't ever had. So I'm slowly progressing that way. I mean, I think for me, the, the question I had is um, when, when you work in the shop and I don't know how long you were in the business for, but like I've, I've been in the business for 10 years and I've been working for my GM and who's, who was an HP and we're about eight and I'm very capable in the shop. Unfortunately, like the business side of things are all things I understand, but the negotiation to me will be hard because when I try to leave the shop, he'll, he'll think, well, yeah, but who's going to do that, right? Like whenever you talk about that, and I understand the sales side of that and I, I can show them the numbers and everything like that, but I'm also the crutch in the shop when things go wrong or things need to be fixed. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, that's part of the, the reason. And I think that's part of why we're here is that, you know, there are things like that where um, you, you feel like, oh, but they need me here. They need me there. At the end of the day, I felt some of those same feelings that you're feeling, but for me, my why was so strong and so powerful, 
I, I didn't like, I didn't care anymore. Like I just needed to get out. And I'm like, you know what? You guys can figure that out. Like, that's not what I love to do. And not only do I not love it, I can't do it anymore. I, I have to go outside. Like, excuse me, I need to be out on the golf course. I just can't do it anymore. And I know that's easier said than done. I just, I just decided again, like that prospect of being stuck and having to deal with that stuff anymore was more daunting than trying to do something that I loved. And if I couldn't do it there, which I wanted to do, I felt so strongly I was going to do it somewhere else. Brian, did you like my response? You know what, Will? My retail manager is sitting on the other side of the office right now, and I'm going to tell him what you said, and he's going to love that. He's going to be like, yeah, you're actually useless. Thanks for that. <laughs> but I think, I think the truth is this, right? And this is what my mentor tells me all the time, right? My mentor tells me this all the time in my business because, you know, I, I, uh, for my business mentor, I've got multiple mentors, uh, but my business mentor is like, well, you're just not that important. Like, you're just, you're making out like you're that good. And it's like, well, I'm like, what do you mean I am that good? And he's like, well, if you grow a company, you know, you have to start to understand that you find talent and you put it in your position. And so the first thing is realizing is what you do is not brain surgery right? Running RGX, it probably is brain surgery because I can't do it, but Micah can. So that's a good thing. But, you know, in terms of you think of presenting on this call today, it's like, look, look, Dan's an amazing job. Hey, this is why we're bringing mentors on to grow it. And so the first thing is realizing what you, what you do, the more we sort of make it like, I can't, nobody else can do it. That's the micromanager. And the reason why I say that's not my monkey is if you haven't read Ken Blanchard's book, One Minute Manager, One Minute manager meets the monkey. It's one of the best books out there because it's all about putting monkeys on your back, which is other people's problems. The next, the next challenge, the next question, the next answer is a monkey, right? So when someone says, um, Hey, we need to send out an email and someone goes, Oh, I'll do it. You just put the monkey on their back. Right. Was when you say, Oh, I'll do it. The next step is now your, your move. Right. And so I would first of all challenge you to think that way, because you know, that's kind of where Dan's why overpowered that where it was like, look, it isn't rocket science and they will get through because if you just decided right now for whatever reason, Brian, to just stop, they'd figure it out. Right. When, when, when I've had a head coach, I remember one of my, my, my first head coach at WR golf when he left and it was like, and he had, it was wonderful. You know, I knew where he needed to go. He had three kids and he needed to go make a decision. He needed to make $200,000 a year quickly, you know, living in California and, and what he was doing and his kids doing gymnastics all over the country. And, you know, he needed to get into the financial business. And I was like, I'm still dear friends with him. And we got by, you know, but he was such an integral part to it. So I think the first thing I would say there, Dan, is that you realize that very quickly, like that it wasn't going to, that the company wasn't going to fall to pieces. And then I think like you said, Dan is, it's not my problem. You know, like you want Dan Boobany doing the best. I want Brian Wise doing the best. I want Isaac doing his best. I want Steve. If I've got my best asset doing what they're best at, they're going to be successful. If I put them in the wrong place, there's, there's no goal there. So I would, Dan, what are your when thoughts I, on, on this? Well, I always, I always thought that good management and good managers put people in positions to succeed and to take advantage of their skill sets. Not that working in the shop wasn't one of my skill sets, but look, our customers, our members, our guests were saying, we want more time with Dan. I, I couldn't provide that time with 10 hours dedicated to teaching and 30 hours dedicated to being in the shop. And I, I told this to Steve yesterday because Steve reached out and, and we spoke over the phone. Look, I'm going to tell you this, Brian, because you were one of the first people that I, I remember seeing on one of these early calls. You inspired me just like Steve inspired me. You guys are so, you guys are so far ahead of the game. I'm like, oh, I want to be like Brian, like the confidence that you exude that just came out, you know, through your, through your, you know, your computer screen. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, that guy's really got it, you know? And I thought the same thing about Steve. I mean, these are people that I look back on and I'm like, that was part of my motivation because I just wanted to be where you were. And now I'm saying like, there's no reason why you can't be because I looked at, at the, the example that you set and the confidence that you showed, and I just took it and I ran with it. And there's no reason why you can't do the same thing. It just, just do it. Jeff. Yeah, great presentation, Dan. I have a question. So with your coaching and you said that you're giving the other um, assistant professionals more golf lessons, totally understand it, totally get it. But how do those students feel now? Because here you're telling the community 
that coaching is the best way to go um, and teaching is kind of not the way to go, but now they're teaching. How does that, how does that work? So that's not the message that I shared with the assistants. Um, look, I sent this video out. I blasted this out to everybody that was part of my, you know, in my coaching realm and all my students. And here's the funniest part, right? If you ever get a chance to see this video, it is so very clear that I have taught my last individual private lesson. I no longer believe it and I will never do it again. It's very clear. And I would send it to people and I got probably three or four responses from people going, Hey, that's great. So when can we get together for a lesson? And I'm like, did you not watch the video? Like some people, they just, that's <laughs> not for them. And so those are the people that I kick over to the assistants who they, you know, they just want to, they just want to teach. They want to do it in an hour and blah, blah, blah. And there are people that just want that experience. I was selling a different experience. I was saying, Hey, look, I no longer believe that that's the best way for you to achieve your goal. If you want to achieve your goal, I'm the guy for you. Yeah. If you just want that one-on-one -on -one experience with somebody standing there telling you that you're hitting great shots, that's the experience for you. Go ahead. I just don't believe in my mind and based on what I've learned and all the studying I did, I don't believe that's the best way forward anymore. And I think you nailed it right there. And I wrote in there, that's the marketing plan, Jeff. The marketing plan <laughs> is it's okay to be unique. It's okay to, you know, just do exactly what you believe in because there are lots of people who are going to come off the course with the chipping yips and be like, no, no, no I, I know Dan's awesome. I'd love to be in this program. I'm too busy. I just need you to get me out of a bunker. I need you to fix my chip. And that's all good. And usually the assistant pros, right? They, they're very good at doing that or the head pro or the, whoever it is, they can fix that. And really that hundred bucks in their pocket is fantastic, but I got other things in life. I want to do three or four hours a week. And so it works really well. But what it does is it highlights that you now only get the people who really want to change and you've indoctrinated them before they come in to know what the culture is, what you believe in, what it's all about. So your job becomes so much easier. So they don't come to you going, well, when are we going to get on the range and get on track man and work on my, you know, my uh, driver optimization. It's like, Oh no, that's not me. That's John. If you want to work with John, that's great. But no one does that because they, they wouldn't have got into the program that way. And so that's really, I think Jeff is someone who's a DOG or a DOI, you know, it's such an amazing opportunity because a lot of people are like, I don't want to have that deeper relationship with my students. I love fixing them and letting them leave. And that's totally fine. Like it's not a bad thing against private lessons. It's just really realizing that at a facility, you need to have in-depth programming and coaching and development right? Player development concepts versus, yeah, there's still always going to be a need for a quick fix because of that type of person. Um, so I think that's, that, that's definitely one's a great question there, Jeff. Um, Brian Wise, what was the book about the monkeys? That is the one minute manager meets the monkey by Ken Blanchard. So it's just an awesome book, such a great book to read. Um, Steve Miller, it's okay to turn them away to someone else. Had to do it so many times in the last three months. Yeah, it's a bit nerve wracking though, isn't it, Steve, when you first do it, because you think like, oh God, I'm just throwing money out the window. What was your experience with it, Steve? I'll tell you, it was the hardest thing I had to do, um, especially coming out of COVID and you know being down here with, with losing a job prior. It's like, it went against my entire belief system. and it was one of those things where um, I would actually give them, uh, you know, we would, they would be like, Oh yeah. It's like, you know, let's go through the process. You know, I want to, I just want to do this for a month. I'm like, no, no, I, I can't do that because I can't help you. And they're like, well, you know, I just want to, it's like, look, there's a guy right down the street. He's awesome doing swings. It's like, he does it all day. He also does coaching, but quite honestly, it's like, I feel that he could be a better fit for you. And I hate to say it this way, but it's like for 200 or 300 bucks to turn somebody away to potentially, you know, lose them down the line and lose my belief and be working, you know, someplace that I didn't really want to be doing what I didn't really want to do. It's like, it just, it made it easy. Just, Hey, these guys are awesome. They're good, good instructors. Go to them. Yeah. And then you water down your product, right? Because people start coming, well, you did this for him, you did that for her. And then the uh -huh. next thing you know, you're back in it. And they're like, well, you didn't really mean it, did you? Because you did that. And that's where Dan, I love that video you sent out. He sent it to me on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon. I was just like, rock star hashtag. I was just like, oh God, it's like, I've never actually sent out that video. It's just that the only, I was actually teaching someone one-on-one -on -one lesson the other day and it's the pastor from my church. And uh, he hasn't played golf in like three years. And I was like, look, just, I was like, let's get out for a playing lesson. He's like, oh, I'm touched a club in three years. I'm like, 
I'm thinking just really quickly, let me just at least make sure this guy can make contact with it. Because if I get on the golf course, I don't want him to feel that bad. And I'm getting, I got a tournament this coming weekend. And so I was like, come out and practice with me. So we practiced for like an hour and a half together. And so that's, that was my one, which I didn't charge for, obviously. Um, Because again, if I'm working with someone one-on-one, it's because I'm playing and practicing golf with them and they're my buddies. So um, Dan, final thoughts before we wrap up today. Um, Love the call. Phenomenal job. Any final thoughts? Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for, again, all of your help and support. I would say there is more than enough for everyone to go around. That's the first thing. I also think that, and Will, you alluded to this a little bit. I believe in what's what I call the life cabinet. And that's that you, you know, just like the president has a cabinet of people that he, or, you know, he trusts to help him make decisions. I believe that it is a very strong and confident thing to do to surround yourself with people who are not only as good as you, but maybe better than you to help you along your journey. That's the kind of support you're going to get, you know, from Will Robbins. That's, you know, you're the kind of people that I've surrounded myself with to help me, you know, be better at what I do. When you tell somebody that somebody else may be a better fit, if you're that person, don't you sort of walk away with like, man, they must be really confident in what they're doing. If they're sending me to somebody else who they think would be better for me, like it actually makes you look better. And I tell people all the time, like, if I'm not, let me get you to somebody who will meet your needs. And they come back and they'll say, you know, thank you for doing that. Because it shows that you have self-awareness and that you have so much confidence and so much belief in yourself. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're getting them what they want and what they need based on what you know that you can or cannot provide to them. Love it. Dan, thank you so much, and we thank will be you. sure to uh, we will be sure to keeping everybody updated. You'll see Dan on bunches of calls. Uh, obviously, he's now moving over towards the much more big in the scoring method uh, transition to group coaching. I think transition has done, uh, and so now he's getting into mastermind calls. He'll be working with Jared on that on that next level of that continual development on getting on that that level of accountability and moving through the process. So Dan, greatly appreciate it. Everybody, thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, this will be recorded. It'll be sent out to you for this week. And um, yeah, Dan, looking forward to the journey ahead. It's going to be an amazing one. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye.